come back. Wow. If this is your first time, please make sure you click the like button and subscribe. Uh, because I'm also going to tell you that this is the second part of our prematurity. In the first part or in the first video, we talk basics of prematurity. Right. So you can click the link on the top right corner and watch that video first. Then only after that, you may proceed with this video. Right. So. Management of preterm infants. Firstly, during labor, right? So what do you do during labor? Delivery should be shifted to a center capable of offering advanced neonatal care, right? So this is actually induction is indicated. It's not a spontaneous, right? Tocolytics can be given to delay labor while a suitable center is being searched for. Two doses of intramuscular steroids like uh, betamethasone or dexamethasone should be given to the mother 12 to 24 hours apart if the fetus is less than, four, uh, less than 34 weeks of gestation. If steroids are given 24 hours before birth, uh, they reduce mortality by 40%. During delivery, Cord clamping should be delayed for about a minute. You know, this delaying of uh, cord clamping is very important. Let's look at other benefits. Right, so the benefits include increased uh, ion stores by six months in age. This gives more time transitioning to the life outside the womb. Increased blood volume for the baby and decreased chances of anemia in the baby All right so it's important a delivered premature infant how do we manage this for management purposes preterm infants are divided into those that were born at 35 and 30 weeks gestation and those born before 35 weeks of gestation so infants born at 35 weeks and 36 are usually strong enough to breastfeed and maintain body temperature. So feeding in these infants should be started within an hour and mothers uh, need support for exclusive breastfeeding. The children should be kept warm in all times and should be closely observed for development of infections. Infants born before 35 weeks of gestation, well, they should be admitted into a special care unit. These infants are at risk of hypothermia, infection, feeding problems, apnea, respiratory distress syndrome, and necrotizing enterocolitis. The infants should be seen twice a day to assess feeding ability fluid intake and uh, to check the other signs of danger. The infants should be nested in 80% humidity for the first seven days, like seven days after delivery. Let's look at other treatment considerations. Well, this is a kangaroo, right? So this is uh, basically for um, hypothermia management, right? So preterm babies, preterm infants who are stable should be given kangaroo care soon after birth. It should be ensured at all times, day and night. The infant should be dressed only in a nap or a shot. The infant should be placed on the mother's chest between the breast uh, with skin to skin contact and the infant's head uh, turned to one side just like this the infant should be tied to the mother using a cloth covered together with the mother by mother's claws and the the infant should be breastfed frequently right just like this so we are like more like creating a pocket using the mother's claws just like on the kangaroo here 
The aim is a core temperature of 37 degrees Celsius, right? Let's just give the range of 36.5 to 37.1 degrees Celsius with the feet warm and pink. If kangaroo care is not uh, preferred by the caregivers, a clean incubator can be used. Next is feeding. Exclusive breastfeeding needs to be emphasized for these infants. Infants that are able to breastfeed should be breastfed. Those that cannot be breastfed should be given expressed breast milk via spoon or a cup. When the infant is gaining weight and suckling well, reduce the cup frames. The set daily breast milk intake for preterm infants should be divided into 12 feeds, right? So we have a specific number. For example, uh, you want a target of, um, let's, okay, let's just go through this and then I'll give you a summary. You start with 50 meals per kilograms per day on the first day, right? So you divide this by 12. You divide the 60 by 12 because you are giving like 12 feeds the whole day and then on every day afterwards you increased by by 20 million so on the second day you give like for the whole day you give eight just divided by 12 you know that the amount you need to give uh right uh, like on each feed and then uh you should increase by 20 until you reach 200 meals Per kilogram per day on day 10 right so it should be it's like a serial increase preventing apnea right so i told you what apnea is this is a cessation of breathing for 20 seconds for 20 seconds or more right so caffeine citrate is uh, the preferred agent for these infants to prevent apnea caffeine citrate caffeine citrate you can also use a minor filling. The loading dose of um, caffeine citrate, caffeine citrate, is 20 milligrams per kilogram orally or intravenously, and a maintenance dose of 5 milligrams per kilogram per day. Right, so you you give this one this maintenance like 24 hours later. The maintenance dose can be increased by 5 milligrams per kilogram per day every 24 hours until you reach a maximum dose of 20 milligrams per kilogram per day unless side effects uh, develops. Continue for 4 to 5 days after apnea stops. Right, so that's um, caffeine citrate. For aminophilin, aminophilin is given at a loading dose of 6 mg per kg intravenously over 20 minutes. And this will be followed by a maintenance dose of 2.5 mg per kg every 12 hours. Right. So the loading dose again, 6 mg maintenance, 2.5 mg. You should monitor for apnea using an apnea monitor. If this is not available, yeah, like here in Zimbabwe, use a pulse oximeter that is turned on for hypoxemia. Next will be respiratory support. If respiratory support is required, use positive end expiratory pressure, PEEP, for um, I mean, of five centimeters of water. It is possible to stabilize with continuous positive airway pressure, CPAP only. You should start with a lower peak inspiratory pressure of 20 centimeters of water. Consider elective intubation and endotracheal tube if infant is born before 27 weeks of gestation. Arterial oxygen tension should be maintained at 50 to 80 millimeters of mercury or saturation between 
90 and 95 percent infant care there should be minimum handling of the infant don't just move the infant from one place to another no 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 stop that and there should be appropriate noise level don't make a lot of noise and the lighting should be perfect and the necessary right according to the guidelines not too much light and not too dim parents should be supported as well like psychologically because after giving birth to a, a preterm baby you know the mothers are cannot be like mentally stable they are always watching like always thinking they are going to lose their baby so they need their support as well you should also start specific treatment of associated disease for example surfactant uh you giving surfactant in case of respiratory distress syndrome thank you so much if you like this video please make sure you give it a thumbs up leave a comment in the comment section and most importantly subscribe